<laughs> Don't you know he started the Salem witch trials? George Putnam. <laughs> He killed the witches. One got loose, Amelia Earhart, and then he came back, sabotaged the plane. Oh fuck! On dude. behalf of Purdue University. That's crazy. Hello, boys. Hello, girls. Hello, non-binary folks, and welcome back to the number one Amelia Earhart podcast on the internet. My name's Josh. My name is Rick. And my name's Christian. And we are the Judgy Judges. Judges. Back end conspiracy pilled more than ever. That's right, it's folks. It's not a conspiracy. Uh, well, it's a conspiracy that we just created. Yeah. That his that her Amelia husband, Earhart's gay? That her husband killed her because she was a witch. But that wasn't her husband. Yeah, it no, was. No, it was. Oh, I thought you just said that was somebody else's husband. No, Dorothy was his, his first, first wife. Oh. Uh, hey, we're yeah. deep into Amelia Earhart history right now, guys. Yeah. Got it. They might have potentially found her plane. That's kind Maybe. of crazy. Do we, when do we just say let let it be? You know, that's kind of how I feel. About Let's it. maybe we dig it up, put it in a museum, and then some climate scientists can throw some soup on it. How about what that? What is <laughs> what is a mystery right now that you would like to have solved before you die? Um, hmm. probably how to get my money up. That's a pretty big mystery to me. How to do a kickflip? Are we talking like? Just like really famous ones, or like how personal can we get with these mysteries? What is a personal mystery you have? Where did my PS2 memory card go? Yeah, what's up? What's up with that, mom? I I guess you could say that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. What do you want? I had. I was thinking more of line along the lines of like who killed John Bonet? Where's Amelia Earhart's plane? Mm -hmm. What happened to that the kind of thing? to the wait? Who was the? Was it a politician whose kids who kid disappeared? The Lind Lindbergh baby on the on the toilet or whatever. On the toilet. There's some toilets involved with that. Like they oh they said they might have flushed him down the toilet or something like that. Uh well the the crocodile crawled out from the toilet, grabbed the baby, and yeah. went back down the toilet. Um, what are you talking about? There's some theory you about use the toilet. The Lindbergh. Florida, are you talking obviously. about the Lindbergh baby? Because I don't think you're talking about. Lindbergh yeah, baby. it's a mystery. What would you want, Erica? How about how about this? What the fuck happened to my PS2 card? Shut I'm up. just pissed about it. I had a lot of hours saved on the Kingdom Hearts 2, and then it fucking went missing. I beat Demix in one try. That's you know how crazy. fucked up that is? And then the memory card's gone? Toilet theory? Something about them like flushing the kid down the toilet. Hey, but while we're looking that up, you can send us your mysteries over at P.O. Box 58. Ottawa, Illinois, 613 mm. First card of the night comes to us from... Oh, from... Ouch. from Anything? From... It's a but bunch no. of... It looks like a bunch of Christmas... Oh, there's another... Is that another card in there? Is this just... We got Christmas cards, handmade Christmas cards from... Just looks in like time. Children. From Zion. That we had a Christmas card... This is going to be co cool. Oh, no, it is that way. Interesting. I would think it would go that way. But that's okay. A Christmas tree foot. A For sand, free? A snowman foot. For free? A reindeer, reindeer foot. foot. And this is a handprint Christmas tree with an upside down bow. Oh, the Interesting. Bow is upside down. Huh? Yeah. Um, we ha His mom, their mom, sent us a, a ghosty one, I believe. Oh, yes. I remember this one. Oh, and yeah, And I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God, those are so cute. Send more. And so she sends more. And we also got to save sense. the date from, uh, I almost said their, the name of the town because it's a person's name, Carly and Ezekiel. Hello, judges. You can say our names if you'd like. My fiance and I would list, love listening to your podcast. We pug it whenever we can. Pug? Is my, that a pun? No nope. plug. Just... Has a typo, I believe. My favorite is Erica, spelled wrong, of course. <laughs> and my fiance's favorite is the pun master Josh. And Christian's there too. He thinks all That's of true. your tweets should bang. <laughs> yeah. Legally, they should be banging. <laughs> I look forward to listening to your pod every Monday on my long drive to work that feels shorter as I listen. We hope you have a very happy holiday. Love, Carly. That was so sweet. Thank you. Thank Maybe you. spell my name right. Uh, and we could make it to this wedding if we really wanted to. It's in Pennsylvania. It's got to oh. be Pennsylvania. It's the only one with a P state, okay. right? It's the only no. P state. Yeah. What's the other P state? Pittsburgh. 
Uh, and then we also got a package from Lua in the Discord. And I have to, I have to Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, ah, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Pooh, Hampshire. I mean, I don't think we need to be doing this. I think there's one state with a P in it. <laughs> Is it just? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Hawaii. That one's got a silent P. It is a silent P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, no. Poo, oh, Me Poo Mexico. <laughs> I wish we would have picked a state earlier in the alphabet, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Is there any other states with... Uh, a, it's got to be Alaska, right? Well, there's Alabama, <laughs> oh, Arizona, oh Arkansas. Pull out the thing. I don't. There's no note with this. It's from Lua in the Discord. It's for you, Erica. There's no way. Is it? Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's a carrot. It's a carrot on a little halter. Is it a halter top, crop top? What's the difference? Dude, I don't know. A halter top is just straps that go around your neck. Huh. And, huh. Nothing, and nowhere else. Well, oh, that's a crop top. This would be a crop top sweater. The Yee. best time to wear crop top sweater. It's so cute. Oh, it's so soft. All the time. Feel it. Feel it. It's so soft. It looks Ooh. very soft. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lua. Thank you, Lua. Did you guys see the um, 3D printed uh, carrot katana? No. No. Oh, I got it sent to me so many times. I'm sure we were. T is it not a TikTok? I think it was an Instagram reel. Ah. Hmm. I'm going to be 3D printed a, a plastic carrot, but you open the carrot and it's one of those like swords that use like an old lightsaber. Oh, the toy hell lightsabers. Oh, yeah. So you just like fling it out and you whoosh, and it is a katana. That's pretty That's sick. That's sick. That's much sicker than what I had imagined. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think somebody needs to make me that. <laughs> just imagine I just you say something vile and I just whip that shit out telescopic and I just hit you in the knees no cause that's actually gonna hurt but if you telescopic poke him in the eye ooh it's what he deserves if I'm being honest it tis tis uh do we do anything else on this Wait. podcast so if I wear the carrot sweater okay. and I've run out of carrot bonks okay does that Get mean I can the... just tackle you no no I feel like I should be allowed you to tackle you. You still only get one per half. Yeah. But that's because I only had one carrot. No. Now I've got... That's in the bylaws. It's two carrots. <laughs> okay. And a carrot sweater. So that's three carrots. Yeah. So the thing is, it would just... There's a lot of expensive equipment around us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that could be a very costly body slam mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i would have to say something real bad and if yeah. i'm saying something bad enough that you would damage hundreds if not thousands of dollars of equipment i don't think we should have a podcast <laughs> true <laughs> whatever i would say that would that would elicit that response it's but, gotta be what? get me off the get me off the air <laughs> i'm gonna put this out here okay if somebody wants to pay me to wear that and tackle joshua I will do it. Oh, for sure. Wow. Yeah, I mean us, right? No, pay me. I mean, we'll talk about the split. <laughs> no, if somebody wants to pay you to get tackled, like sure, fine, but you can pay me. Yeah. I just I, I'm getting hurt in this instance potentially. You don't know that. No, I would assume. Mm, yeah. Just your ego, really. And like, no, there's not much there. So. I just feel Egos. like there's two parties involved <laughs> in this. And the fact that only one party is getting paid is bad. Mm. I could pay you in carrots. Exposure? Fuck, exposure is really good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if what if we set a Patreon goal? Okay. What if we hit 23,000 patrons? What are we at now? 2,200. We hit three thousand patrons. We will film a video of Erica tackling me. I thought you said twenty three thousand. No, three thousand. And I was like, that seems like a lot. Yeah, that's a big jump. Three thousand patrons, and we'll film Erica tackling me five times. Whoa! I was just gonna do it once. We gotta make it a goal. Get a couple different angles. Yeah. All right. So I get a couple practice ones in. Yeah. And then I can like really just. Have you ever tackled someone before? No. I was wondering that I too. I will have to teach you how to tackle so you don't hurt yourself. Hurt, you're worried about me hurting myself. Yes. You can paralyze yourself very easily. 
Hmm. The worst I'll get is like a cracked rib. Like I'll be all right. You don't want to be paralyzed from the neck down. Did you not realize how dangerous tackling is? I've seen Friday Night Lights. Okay. Clear eyes. <laughs> full hearts. Eyes. Clear eyes. Full hearts. Can't lose. One Tree Hill. They do lose, unfortunately. They do. <laughs> oh. Well, their star quarterback tackled somebody and broke his neck and got paralyzed. Whoa. So, spoiler alert. Well, we don't just spoil 30 year old films. 20 year old films. Oh my films. god, Friday Night Lights is a TV show from whoa, like 2005. Whoa. There's whoa. also a movie. I the movie came it. out so much before the TV show. Uh, well, I never heard of that. So That's <laughs> insane to Listen me. Listen to me. The movie didn't have our queen, Connie Britton, is or that... our king, Kyle Chandler, so I don't care. Is the show the one where she's just always drinking wine? Yeah. That's really funny. The movie came out in 2004. Uh, the show came out in like 2005, 2006, so... Is she still banging hot? Yeah. She was... <laughs> yeah, she's still hot. Yeah, good for her. We don't just talk about banging hot celebrities on this podcast. We also podcast on this podcast. And what that entails is us going, going online, online and finding find silly, silly little, little stories, stories and, and sometimes, sometimes sweet little baby boy, pissy Chrissy <laughs> Christian himself does it. And he told me before this episode, I said, dude, please don't have a banger episode. And he said, Josh, you're going to be fucking upset with me, bud. Yeah. I hate to hear that request from you, dude. <laughs> I really hate to hear that from you. But I love to hear this story coming to us straight off of the presses from r slash relationships. How straight off the presses? Two hours ago. <laughs> That's pretty hot. I Was it two hours ago from the screenshot? No. Okay. I don't take screenshots. Wow. I'm about it, about it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for interrupting do we need you. To, do we need to interrupt him one more time and talk about the Nikki... Uh, Minaj, the, the Nicki Minaj drama. Wait, okay, go on. Can you I tell me about the <laughs> Nicki Minaj There's and so Megan Thee Stallion much, so much. drama? I've been kind of following it a little bit on TikTok. It's pretty crazy. This thing with celebrities these days is there's just like so many anonymous accounts that are just like celebrity snark accounts where people can like anonymously put stuff in to be like, I'm a PA for a reputable thing. What does snark mean? Just like talking shit. Okay. Uh, it's like tea, the but starkies. like way more negative. Okay. Uh, and so I guess it all kind of started based off like one of these like anonymous accounts just said that uh, Nicki Minaj has to go to rehab before her next tour because she's a little addicted to cocaine. <laughs> okay. And she just started going crazy on Twitter and like t- tweeting at people who were like retweeting this thing and like uh, trying to call people out. And then. Megan the Stallion put out like a little diss track, but like it was a very vague okay. thing where the the lyric was uh, like people be worried about Megan, but they should be worried about Megan's law, which is a requirement for people to who are sexual predators to be on a website uh, listed as a sexual predator. And Nicki Minaj's husband is on that website on the- and like went crazy. <laughs> it just, and like her response was like, oh, yeah, well, you're tall. Mm. And you have big feet. You've got big feet. Hey, I remember you got shot? Big foot. And you got shot in the foot. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> All I really saw from this was the one guy being like, no, Megan was right. And then that dude got, like, him and his entire family got doxxed for Bella? it. Bella? Uh, I believe Bella is, uses she, they pronouns. I am sorry. But they've been, like... I don't even know who you're talking about. It's a TikToker. They've mm. been, like, bullied off of TikTok multiple times. Uh-oh. Like, multiple times. I don't know if it's always by the barbs, but they've been in so much shit on TikTok. But uh, then Nicki Minaj, like, Ben Shapiro dropped a, a rap with uh, oh Tom McDonald. I don't know who that is either. He's a Canadian rapper who Erica, marks... I love... It makes it brings me so much joy when we say these names and go, who is that? And it's like, oh my god, you're so innocent. Today. And it was a dog shit song, <laughs> dog, sh- dog shit rap. But they went to number one on the iTunes chart, which every conservative song does, because the only people who use iTunes anymore are old people who don't understand streaming services. Yeah. And they passed up Nicki Minaj's song, and so Ben Ben also dissed Nicki Minaj in the rap. Oh no! And then Nicki Minaj was like, Yo, Ben, sick song. So glad to see you top in the, and she's like, like giving big props to Ben Shapiro's rap. Yuck. Big up to my boy Ben. And it's like, oh man, it's just so strange. It's so surreal. It's such a weird. The Ben Shapiro rap sounded like AI. 
It, did. it was insane. The video was definitely, they definitely used AI on his, uh, really, you could tell on the mouth, but, um, they had three fingers. <laughs> no, uh, it was so bad though. And like, it's so stupid. The opening bar is like, uh, yeah, I got money. My wallet's fat like Lizzo or something like that. And like everyone's like, you gotta admit that's a bar. I don't like Ben Shapiro, but that's a bar. It's like, is it? He's just calling someone fat. Yeah. And she's just calling someone who gets bullied all the time for being fat, fat. That's not a bar. It's not even that <laughs> Damn, creative. It's, 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 it's like, yeah, you said you have a lot of money. Good job, bud. <laughs> you don't have to hand it to Ben Shapiro. That's yeah. the thing. Well, that's crazy because the opening line to this is kind of a bar, too. I, 28 female, walked in on my fiance, 34 male, kissing his coworker. <gasps> Oof. Wait. <laughs> Are they actors? And that's Ooh, like his job question. is to, to kiss his coworker? It's a really good question. Or did they get an owie and he had to kiss it to make it feel better and it just happened to be on her pussy? Oh my God. That's also a great question. Um, <laughs> so we all worked together in a hospital, unfortunately. Ah, so they... Could be a set. Could be I... an owie. Could, could be, be an who? owie. An owie. Poo-poo. An owie, yes. They're doctors. I thought you said in Maui. It could and have been in like, Maui. I mean, I guess... <laughs> That is possible. It still could possibly be in Maui. We'll see if we get there. Uh, they are paramedics and have worked together longer than I've been at the hospital. I knew my fiance when I was still in medical school about six years ago, but he moved, so our relationship ended. I ended up joining the residency program at the same hospital where my husband was working, and we ended up reconnecting after two and a half years. Uh, we ended up getting married. Congratulations. We're actually planning to elope as we're not the type to want a massive fuss. Okay, wait. So are they... Fiance. I was saying husband. I meant fiance. Oh, okay. That solves all my questions, actually. Thank you. Well, she starts calling him by his name at one point. But I'm just saying fiance. Oh, his name's husband? That's pretty close. You? His name's Ian. <laughs> when I see Ian, I think husband. Uh... We're playing on eloping as we're not the type to want to have a massive fuss. His colleague, 30 female Sam, and he had a fling of some sort about nine months before I returned. But it finished by the time I'd started at this hospital. So I decided to drop lunch into him before I started my shift yesterday, as they had been slammed working as well as we all. (laughs) I'm stopped by... I'm stopped by his manager as I walk in. I talk to her, wish her a good shift, and give her an energy bar. And she points me in the direction of my soon-to-be husband. However, when I see his lip, his lips are locked with Sam's. I left. I'm, I can't read today. My brain is melted. I left. He ran after me and tried to tell me that he didn't kiss her back. She shocked him. He loved me and can't wait to marry me. <laughs> I really want to believe him, but I also have respect for myself, and I won't let them make me look stupid. I stayed with my friend last night. Do I trust his word, or do I break up? I love the line of, I really want to believe him, but I also have respect in, of myself. That's awesome. What do we think? I've never been I've never been kissed against my will, so I need to preface this with that. Mm-hmm. I can still get pregnant. I don't see a scenario where you don't understand a kiss is happening until you're mid to kiss. Yeah. Like that's such a TV trope thing of like guy standing there, girl kisses him and then girl walks in and he's like, Oh, she kissed me. It's like you, you don't get like this without understanding the previous, like the distance between you. Why were you fondling her breast, Ian? What the fuck? (laughs) I just had my hands like this and (laughs) she fell into me. Oh, I was going, Oh, so I don't I don't know if I would ever unless it was like an actual sexual assault situation, I don't think I could buy the like oh, I didn't kiss her back like that's such a cop out. Yeah, we're just that's what we do as coworkers. We're just giving each other good luck kisses. We're practicing CPR. <laughs> Every now you stand up and give each other CPR. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I. I'm not CPR certified, so I don't know if that's correct or not, but it sounds wrong. How are you not CPR certified? I was about certified? to say, aren't you required to be? No. That's kind of wild. Huh. Why would I have to be? I, 
I work on machines. I don't work on people. <laughs> I, I mean, could you have give, to, it's, give it's, me a robot. I could give it CPR. That's a tagline for a really bad movie. I work on machines, not people. <laughs> yeah. Don't mock my profession, you fuckers. It's just weird because I needed to be CPR certified. You were the safety officer. Everybody at our job was CPR Everyone? certified. Yeah. That's kind of kind of a nice perk. And we just I'm being honest. Yeah, we just worked in an office. <laughs> I wanna I wish I was CPR certified. We can get you CPR certified. It's not that hard. Everyone honestly should do it. Well, the liability then. There's no liability. Good Samaritan. Whoa! The last time I got CPR certified, the last class I took was when I was pregnant with Olsen. And I was a ver- like, it was literally like probably three weeks before I gave birth. Yikes. And you have to do, there's an infant portion. And that was really, really hard for me. I mean, did, did you do the like, I know like you're saying emotionally it was hard. Yeah. But did you do the like actual compressions for like two minutes? Yep. I imagine physically that had to have been That's what I yep. was tough thinking. as well. Mm-hmm. To be extremely pregnant and doing compressions has to be hard. It sucks mm-hmm. when you're not extremely pregnant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what doesn't suck though? This next story from r slash relationship underscore advice. Ooh, is this one hot off the press? I mean, it's warm off the press. <laughs> My 28 female boyfriend, 40 male, age gap, got me a sentimental (laughs) birthday gift, and I feel guilty that I don't like it. Okay. I feel so spoiled and guilty right now, and would def appreciate some feedback on this. My boyfriend and I have been dating for three and a half years. That's a little weird. And he's always spot on with gifts, so it's not like he doesn't, it's not like he doesn't know me and doesn't pay attention to my likes and dislikes. But for Christmas, he got me this beautiful gold chain. My birthday was yesterday, and he was hinting that he was having a custom pendant made for me for my birthday. And it finally came in today. Before I opened it, he explained that this was a custom replica of a pendant that his mother had and was buried with. Okay. He lost his mother when he was nine in a very tragic way and was unable to even attend her funeral. The pendant that his father got her was something he remembers very well. I opened up the box, and it was a large heart pendant with white gold details. It's a beautiful piece, and I appreciate the sentimental value, but it's totally not my style at all. Mm -hmm. And I feel so, 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 so bad. But I told him it was beautiful and instantly put it on to wear it. He could tell that I wasn't head over heels about it. And I told him I typically don't like heart-shaped jewelry or white gold. But that the story behind it all and how special it is him matters. He offered to exchange it for something else, but would lose money since it was a custom piece. I told him it was no problem because I'll happily wear it. But at the same time, I feel really bad that I don't like it as much as I feel like I should. I feel bad that he spent a lot of money on something I only like due to the background. It makes me feel conflicted and spoiled now. If you were in my shoes, would you just happily wear it or pick something else out? Erica, what would you do about jewelry I bought you? <laughs> I'd happily wear it. Hmm, that sucks a lot, because now I don't know which ones you don't like. <laughs> I, I like all of them, because you picked it out for me, specifically, so I like it. Hmm. This happens a lot with, like, the traditional, like, like, uh, the, like, People who use like a grandmother's ring for like a engagement ring and stuff yeah. too, where it's like a dated style. Yeah, it's, like, it's especially with something like jewelry, like that's it's. I mean, anything that you're wearing, like people's style is so personal. Yeah, mm-hmm. there is no guarantee that whatever piece that somebody else likes, somebody else will like. Yeah, and yeah, that's a pretty bold thing to spend. I am assuming, like he was implying, like a decent chunk of cash on. Yeah, not like. Not asking your fucking partner to be like, do you, do you like white gold? Do you like hearts? Because if he's already being like, well, I could exchange it, then you should just ask her in the first place. Right. Yeah. It's almost like this 40-year-old maybe doesn't know how to handle a proper relationship and is therefore dating a less experienced person Huh. to get around that. Hmm. Interesting. Potentially. Could be. Could be. I mean, I don't think you should feel forced to wear it. That's pretty crazy. Also, yeah, I also just feel like, I don't know, 
How big of a piece of jewelry is it? I feel like if it was something that was expensive, it's like probably a decent size. So it's like, you can't even wear it with everything anyways. Yeah. You only have, here's the thing. You only have to wear it like two or three times and then he's going to forget about it and it'll be fine. <laughs> All you have to do is die tragically then you don't have to wear it again. Ooh, that's just, smart. That's smart. Just for the rest of your afterlife because they're going to bury or, you with it. You could just wear it on special occasions, like your anniversary or his birthday. Mm. I would wear it to his family's events. That's what okay. I would do. <laughs> like his family's Christmas. Sure. I don't think you should feel spoiled, though. That's very no. strange. I don't think you should feel beholden to wearing it. You should yeah. wear it a couple of times, at least, though. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to, but you should just suck it up and wear it a couple of times. Yeah, I disagree. If Aurora bought me something I didn't like it, I'd just be like, I don't like this, sorry. Whoa. Yeah, and you're a dickhead, so... Why? Because I'm That's communicating crazy. that yeah. I don't like it? No, I just... I mean, I bought Aurora jewelry that uh, she just said was okay. Like, she wears it every now and again, mm -hmm. very rarely. But, like, my feelings don't get hurt about it. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, that's fine. Okay. But it was Fair like enough. a $50 necklace or something, so it wasn't like anything crazy. Okay, money bags. Last story of this half from any guesses? R slash relationships. relationships. This one is cold off the presses. Chilly. <laughs> it's not as cold as some of my stories I have saved. This is from 11 days ago. My husband cheated on me and is now asking if he is able to remain friends with the person that he cheated with. Why are you still no. dating him? Why are you still married to him? Well, she kissed him, their co because it's <laughs> a lot of going on here. I just don't get that. I don't get the point of being in a relationship and then someone breaks the like one rule and then you're just like, well, we can still be married. And then for him, like the reason why you wouldn't is because obviously you can never trust them again. Yes. And then immediately he's like, but I can still be friends with Elizabeth, right? <laughs> it's like, it's no. I promise I won't kiss and fuck her anymore. If that ain't you know. the fucking, like, it's just like already, you already know he's going to cheat on you again. Yeah. You already know he's going to do it again. But I, I didn't cheat on you because of their personality. I cheat on you because of their looks. But now I can like separate it. I'm, <laughs> I'm only friends with them for their personality, so mm -mm. it's cool. Mm -mm. No. My 42 female husband, 44 male, have been together for just over 20 years and have small children all under the age of 10 together. Just over three months ago, my husband confessed to having an affair with a close friend of his. It was someone he has known for many, many years, about the same length of time that he's known me. That Oof. doesn't make it okay. The affair lasted almost two years, but I ah! imagine that perhaps there was emotional cheating going on beforehand. <sighs> perhaps. Most likely, yeah. Potentially. For goodness knows how long. I must guess about 18 years. <laughs> yeah. His plan initially was to leave our marriage. After confessing the details of the affair to me, he also shared everything with his uh, parents, close friends, and even his colleagues at work. Okay. He had made plans to leave, going as far <laughs> as signing a lease for a place. Is pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, What's he telling his, like, his friends at work? Like, yeah, I cheated on my wife with this girl I know, I've known for I 20 years. I was planning years. to leave, but... <laughs> Why the fuck would they care? That's crazy. That is such, a, <laughs> such an intimate detail. My colleagues don't even know I have a podcast, guys. Well, they, they didn't even know he got married. That's more intimate. Literally, this. he like after our wedding, he went to like a work meeting. They're like, "Oh, what'd you do over the weekend?" He's like, "I got married." I took yeah. the week off, and I'm like, "Oh, where'd you go on your vacation?" I was like, "I got married." <laughs> it's fine. That's acceptable. It's a very guy thing to have happen. Okay. Also, I was the only one that worked two hours away from the rest of my group. So fair enough. Uh, he told his colleagues. He even made plans to leave, going as far as signing a lease for a place, furnishing it, and paying up front a year's worth of rent. Wow. Okay, so at least he's doing the thing of, like, eject buttoning. Yeah. Of, like, hey, I'm a bad person. I'm leaving. What did you do to bring him back in? <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get away from you. <laughs> this part really sucks. Uh, to get the money to pay that year's worth of rent, he remortgaged their home. Ah, well... <laughs> He was fully set on starting a new life. I urged him to stay and give our marriage a chance to be saved. 
I felt we owed our relationship of over two decades that chance. Nope. It took a lot of work convincing him, but he ended up deciding to stay. He's going to cheat on you again. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it was his decision to stay. He re... For, what did he... Mortgage. Re, remortgaged? Yeah. Your home? So he could leave you? What the fuck? <laughs> It was his decision to stay. And since making this decision, he said he's over. He said over and over that he is exactly where he wants to be with his family. Okay. Since making the decision to stay, he's cut off contact with his affair partner and has been no contact since. Okay. This was about 12 weeks ago. And there are a few red flags in that he hasn't deleted her number. Huh. Hmm. Neither has he stopped following her on various social medias. Mm -hmm. hmm. But most importantly, the communication with her has ended completely. The reason why I know this for sure is because of the radical honesty he demonstrates in our marriage counseling. He talks <laughs> openly and candidly about her in our sessions to the point where I find it triggering. No fucking shit. <laughs> But I understand that open communication is going to be essential when it comes to rebuilding our marriage. Mm -hmm. I, I have to emphasize. At what, at what point is it malpractice of the fucking marriage counselor who's just robbing them blind? To be like, no, no, no. Yeah, we can we can salvage this marriage. Clearly, this isn't. They, can a marriage counselor just be like, you need to divorce? It's insane to me that they're just sitting there being like, okay, so you, Jerry, you're going to keep talking about how you love this woman. And Christina, you hate every moment of this? Yeah, let's do 20 more sessions. <laughs> yeah, hey, they gotta get to a breakthrough, you know? What a fucking scam that sounds like. I have to emphasize again that although he needed to be convinced to stay, I can see he's committed to rebuilding our marriage. He wants it as much as I do. I can just Why? Tell. Why do you want this? Because they have kids. Yeah. Also, it's twenty. It's one. It's one of those things where it's like you get in a, like a five year relationship, and it's like, why aren't you breaking up? You can tell that he's a piece of shit, and now do that four times the length, and it's like I just feel like if after almost fifteen years together, that if I found out uh, that you were going to leave, that you had fucking refinanced our home <laughs> to pay for your new apartment. Like that, that to me means you do not want to be with me anymore. You do not love me anymore. You're not the same person that I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to continue this? I'm only going to be the one that gets hurt in this. Yeah. Why am I prolonging it? Yeah. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, she, well, maybe very... this last paragraph will work on you. Maybe it'll okay. change your views. Mm -hmm. Something that he's brought up earlier on in our counseling sessions and brought up again very recently is his desire to still have a friendship with his affair partner. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He says because they were friends prior to cheating, he would like for them to still have a friendship. No. I've said that I'm not comfortable with that, and I said that the first time he made the suggestion, and he brought it up again just a few days ago. I'm worried how this might impact our marriage if he's permanently cut off from her, and I'm unsure on what to do. So you're worried that your marriage might be worse if he can't talk to the woman that he cheated on you with for multiple years. Yeah. Then break up. <laughs> if this, the, this man is not worth your time. If the thing to keep your marriage together is he needs to have an affair, then that's not a solid marriage for you. Do we th do we think they're like religious? Like are they like Christians? They're like, I can't get divorced. That's worse <sighs> than maybe. I mean, that could like Catholics specifically. Yeah. Is that only, is it only Catholics that are about, like that? Catholics are super anti-divorce. Yeah, hmm. I thought it was all of them except the English ones. No, but it's just Catholics. It's least in Christianity. Oh, well, I'm sure Mormon Mormons don't like it either. I, out of the major Christian cult, uh, <laughs> Christian sects, I almost said cults. Uh, well, Catholics don't like it. Mormons don't like. I'm, I imagine that means West Baptists or uh, Baptists don't like it either. Okay, but uh, everyone but the Lutherans. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's such a. I mean, there's just so many things. There's so much of a societal pressure to stay in relationships, and like, like sh you know, there's money involved, there's kids involved. It just seems like it'd be easier if you just continued this broken marriage that's deter it's it's determined not. to fail. It's yeah. literally not easier. But it's gonna be so much better for you. If and it's not better for your kids. No. Staying together for the sake of your children is not good for them, and it's not good for you. Mm -mm. Like, you are your own person. Just because you have a child doesn't mean you also don't exist anymore. Like, there's exactly one person in the scenario that this is good for. The Him. 
The, no, the fucking marriage counselor. What the f- uh, This dude, the marriage counselor needs to get fired. He's set up for a while. There's a <laughs> lot of sessions going on. They remortgaged their house again to pay the <laughs> marriage counselor. <laughs> that too. God. Rocks. What a good time. No. That's what? a terrible story and I hated there, it. We haven't had, we haven't Stressed me fun. out. There's so much stuff of like, that, I mean, I saw this when I was doing uh, research for a, a Hashan video, but there's like a therapist that like actually is like a marriage counselor who like talks about like marital hate and how it's normal and you should some it's okay to sometimes hate your partner. I saw that and part like, in your video. It's like it's fucking disgusting to me that like that can be seen that person goes and like does interviews and book tours and just acts like that's a norm. Like you shouldn't hate your partner. Yeah, at some mm-hmm. point, oh, at some point you're going to hate your partner and it's like, "What?" <laughs> so many people would tell me that before we got married. Yeah. Oh, you haven't broken up yet? I do it, is it a no. generational thing? Like we've talked it's about this not, before on the podcast. It's not a where, generational thing, man. Like I just feel it's like it's not. It's it's 10 just years older than us. They were still like, "I oh, the old ball and chain." And like our generation don't. People no, people do it. We just don't hang out with them. Is that what it's it is? It's conservative. It's the conservative mindset. I don't mean like Republican Democrat. Like it's the conservative social aspect of like it's like sure religion plays a part into it as well. Of like the societal pressure of like being in a relationship. And so it's like, well, I'm in a relationship, can't ever break up with them because that would suck. So now I just kind of fucking hate this person that I'm tied to. Yeah. And it's, it's there's it's so, so much strange. societal pressure to stay in that relationship. I just can't fathom that. Yeah. You know what you're not gonna be able to fathom? These ad breaks? That story is about Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Nuh-uh. And we'll learn about it on the other side of this break. Bye! <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to this side of the... Welcome to this... Uh, uh... Tell me about that circle, George. Hello and welcome back to this side of the podcast, and I can't wait for me to tell me about that circle jerk. <laughs> Fix it already. Wrong card. It's right on the other card. Swear to God. Hello and welcome back to this side of the podcast, Christian. I cannot wait to, for you tell to tell me about that circle jerk. This week's circle jerk and Josh. It's so funny that you brought this up. Uh, first sentence of the first half of the episode, but talking about conspiracies <gasps> and. This week's Circle Judge, we got a couple low stake conspiracies for all my tinfoil hat wearers out there. I, I feel like there's a, l- a lot right now. Going a lot on? of conspiracies right now. Taylor uh, Swift, NFL, anyone? Oh, rigged. It's not that she's going out with somebody on the best team that's been in the super like the last like four Super Bowls. I don't know how many Super Bowls they've been in. A lot of the most recent ones. Patrick Mahomes has been in four Super Bowls in his six year career, I think. Is yeah. That, that's that right? insane, right? Well, he's been in the league for seven, but he's only started for six or something like that. Yeah, it's fucking insane. He's the one of the best players, if not Even arguably. It's, rigged. it's fucking insane. He's so good. It's crazy that you did bring that up because I didn't save that one. But there was a little conspiracy that's like the NFL is completely rigged. They couldn't let the Lions win because of, people have been cheering for them because they're a fucking underdog. <laughs> Everybody hates the fucking 49ers. Now we can have the Chiefs win. And everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> yeah, it's not that the Lions just played like shit for uh, 30 minutes of football. That couldn't be it. <laughs> they didn't fully play. Is that how long the game is or is that just half of a game? They played poorly in the second half of the game. Okay. First conspiracy theory. Salmonella is just a myth designed designed to sell ovens. No, oh. no. I thought salmonella is a myth for me to stop drinking my eggs raw. You're never gonna get me to stop <laughs> no. eating the batter, bitches. Same. I will always eat the batter, <laughs> except for if I'm immune compromised. Have I said this on the show where Aurora will eat pancake batter raw? Okay. And to me, that's so different than like cookie cake dough. batter. Yeah. Like, I don't know why in my brain, like, <coughs> she made pancakes the other morning and she came up, I was, you know, doing, I was working or something up here. She came up and she had, like, drops of Jupiter right here. Uh-huh. And, and you licked it? Yeah, I licked it off very sexily. Uh-huh. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, is it toothpaste? Is it, I was like, what is it just, you know, like, face crust or whatever? <laughs> you know, you just dry <laughs> skin. sometimes. Uh-huh. And she's like, it might be pancake batter. I was like, did you eat raw pancake batter? And she's like, 
maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, why, maybe. You're, just eat the pancake. <laughs> I don't understand it. It's I, no different than you eating cookie dough batter. No, I'm here's a, the thing. Cookie dough batter, to me, it's the texture. Like, the it's raw pancake batter, like, I don't know. It just is to weird. Me, to me, pancakes don't, they're not, like, that sweet to themselves. Like, that's why you have to put syrup on them. So, like, yeah. to just have, like, pancake batter is, like, a nothing flavor versus I guess. like cake batter, brownie batter. It's like it, it tastes like something. The thing right, is, fair enough. I'm not a big cookie dough or like cake batter guy. And oh, whoa, it's the best part. I don't dislike it. I just don't do it. I don't know. We purposefully undercook our brownies. I mean, brownies. Well, if, they're, if they're for us, yeah. We don't undercook brownies for making them for other people, yeah. but we're bringing those bitches out of the oven like they're lava cake, baby. Yeah. Well, you don't have to fully cook your brownies because when you eat them, you're going to be baked. <laughs> Allegedly. No. Streaming services purposely forget your watch progress to make more money. Mm, no. It means you wa- you're on their service for longer. That's that's the whole thing of this, all internet. Is this directly going but you're out? Hulu? Paying the same amount every month. But now they're getting the buff. They're padding their stats because they're like, oh no, look, look how much watch hours we have, and that's because. They've reset everybody's five minutes into that episode. So we're all rewatching that first five minutes. And I'm like, did I already see this episode? And then you skip the episode, you go to the next episode, and then you're Plays watching the ad. first five minutes and go, what the fuck? I don't remember what's going on at all. And then you got to go back to that last episode now. We literally just did that last mm-hmm. night. And it was on Hulu. Did you <laughs> think of these or are these Reddit? These are all Reddit. The thing with this one is like, I think Netflix's UI is good. It's not like amazing, but I think it's pretty good. And when it's Hulu, the most solid one. For when sure. Hulu first came out, they had like a solid UI and it's been like degrading over time. And then like when HBO Max's streaming service came out, it was terrible. Dog shit. And then they switched to Max and it's still terrible, but it still makes a ton of money. And so now companies have like learned yeah. you don't need to have a good AI, uh, UI. And so I just think it's less a conspiracy and just... Uh, capitalism. Capital. Hey, <laughs> you're gonna be shocked to learn that a lot of conspiracy theories boil down to capitalism. Yeah, here's what I did write down: Paramount is the worst app I've ever used. It's insane too, because it's like there's got to be like it. It has to take like two software developers to like <laughs> make a UI. go to fucking Substacks and like find the code to make a UI that's not <laughs> dog shit, and they're just like. That's impossible to do. Go to GitHub and download a UI yeah. and install it. <laughs> Here's one I wrote down, and this one also just goes back to capitalism, but generic brands at big box stores are getting shittier. Oh. I feel like generic brands have gotten worse. Really? And as, because as, like, even up until college, I would do generic, and it's like, I would, like, once in a while, like, get, like, name brand shit, and I'm like, that's the same exact thing. And now, anytime I get, like, name brand compared to generic, it's like, what the fuck? It, why is this better? Why are paper? Why are generic paper towels fucked? Why oh. are they so terrible? Yeah, generic paper towels are so bad. If you, but I feel like if you go to places like all these or like Costco and stuff, like places that are like, I don't know, bulk. not well. All these isn't really bulk. They that have much, like their like, own brand though. Yeah, those places are still solid. But like if you go to Walmart, I feel like they know it's like well, it's either you're gonna spend on like the generic brand, but it's like. We're probably making more money. Like our margin is probably quality. better to just have you buy name brand and interesting. I just that's me. I and think it comes down to capitalism. Does this fuckers. does this include food in the great value? I think so, for the most part, because every once in a while they have sleepers, but for the most part, their peanut, peanut butter, butter is still good. Is it? But it's kind of how do you fuck up peanut butter? I don't know. Have you ever had? Like healthy natural peanut butter. Well, okay, that's but that's fucked. not fucking it up. That's a different product. Okay, that's you know enough. what I mean. That's fair. I feel like the Great Value chicken nuggets, frozen chicken nuggets, are good. Okay. Aldi's frozen chicken nuggets. Yeah. Bad. Really? Hmm. Or is it the tater tots? The tater tots are bad. It's the tater tots, not you, the chicken nuggets. You know I'm so sorry. You know what's really bad? Uh, Great Value brand shit is their fucking chicken. Yeah. Whenever I buy their chicken, I have I have to buy like the name brand chicken from Walmart. It sucks because the not the the cheaper <laughs> great value, whatever the it's not great value chicken, but whatever the brand is, it's the cheapest one. Is it's just so much fat and so much of the like tendons left in it and shit, and it's just so bad. What? And even I mean, I guess these aren't like generic brand, but even with like diapers, like 
our her aunt gave us like leftover diapers at one point she gave us love and it's like the, which it's is like the, the cheapest the, one it's like the cheapest brand mm-hmm. but it's like we were going through more diapers. there was more leaks and like we were going through more diapers with that brand than like if we bought like the more expensive brand and it's like it's this fucked up cycle of like well you can only afford the cheapest one it's the dollar generalification yeah exactly it really fucking sucks mm. man that went on a real long tirade there uh, there's an evil cabal of pedestrians who intentionally walk in front of you at the most inconvenient pace. <laughs> this one feels so real. That, but with driving. It always feels like there's somebody at the worst pace. I have. Way. As someone that drives a lot now for my job, I drive like 72 miles an hour, and I can't tell you how many in times. 35? Yes. I'll never tell. <laughs> but like, I'll be like, Getting ready to pass a semi, and then it's like the exact moment I need to pass a semi, there's somebody going like fucking ninety behind me, and it's like, where did you come from, and why is it only the exact moment that I need to pass where it's like, I'm right next to you, and now I got you handcuffed in here, and it's like, well, I guess I'm going fucking sixty behind the semi now, and it fucking sucks. It happens, I don't know, every other day. Mm. It happens to me a lot. So we were just watching what we do in the shadows. What if this cabal of strangers that's being slow in front of you or driving slow in front of you, what if they're energy vampires? Uh, I got real uh, real Colin vampires. Robinson over there. Yeah, I got a lot of energy vampires in my life. Fucking gay. <laughs> Big brother is a real bloke. Ooh, British. There's no details as to this one. It's only the title. <laughs> oh, is is a real person. Yeah. Okay. So they're just saying Big Brother is real? Yeah, it's a real person. No. It's the but government. British. It's not even the government. It's a single It's, it's a, single a guy. guy. <laughs> but Big Brother's watching is like a euphemism for the government. Yeah, but it actually boils down to a more granular thing than that. It actually boils down to a single bloke. <laughs> it's just one guy. <laughs> gotcha. His name's God. Mm. Hmm. Real bloke that guy is. Preach, brother. Big bloke energy. Baldack brand spicy ramen noodles are an op by the big toilet paper and bowl cleaner companies. I don't know what that brand is. I, I don't know. I don't know Marochan. Spicy ramen noodles are an op by big toilet paper and bo- toilet bowl cleaners. Big toilet bowl cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. I don't know, man. You don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't think. Mm-hmm. I don't eat spicy. There's ramen. somebody out there that that's that one's for you. <laughs> I don't eat spicy ramen often, but I don't think it like. I don't think if I ate ramen, I'd have to be like, I gotta get more toilet bowl cleaner. <laughs> Pringle cans are deliberately slightly too small for a hand. Yeah, that's part of their marketing now. Mm-hmm. It's part of the marketing now. Now we always talk about Pringles. Would you ever talk about Pringles if you if Bo if, Burnham did my hand fit in it? Yeah. I don't know what song you're referring to, so yes, I still would. The song was about how Pringles cans are too small. Somebody commented on this that it's like the whole ploy is that you have to tilt the can and then you accidentally pour out too many Pringles every single time, and then so you're Wasting. unintentionally eating more Pringles than you should be, so you have uh, to buy more Pringles more often. Because Pringles are probably <clears throat> Pringles are probably uh, one of the like worst good snacks it's the particle board of chips. like if you eat one pringle you're like that's not good give me six more <laughs> are we talking original flavor because yes you're correct but if we're talking sour cream and onion those are so good if, if, i don't know i just think they're like but like they're so much worse than like if you got like a bag of lays sour cream and onion and it's okay what about the great value brand <laughs> don't get me started on the great value brand <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's like, it's uh, it's a snack where it's like, I don't enjoy it, but I need to eat all of them. Well, it's because it's a fucking, it's a science experiment. They took all the leftover chip dust and they smashed it into a chip shape for you. <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. Nuh-uh. Yeah, a Pringle is actually what they call the, the chip dust at the bottom. Potato wrinkles? Have you never paid attention to a Pringle? <laughs> like, it's kind of like weirdly grainy. It's a bunch yeah, of... Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> It's the particle board of chips, guys. It's, it's the diesel of chips. It's what's left over. Mm. It's what sinks. It's the heaviest part. Hey, all those, That's how they separate gases. All, all those worry. gasoline heads. <laughs> I don't be loving that one. <laughs> huh. Where's my Petro Boys at? 
Toothbrushes were invented by Big Dental to sell more toothpaste. What? I feel like... How, how would you... How would... What are you going to put the paste on if it's not for to- a toothbrush? Like, you don't invent a you toothbrush. You just swish it around your mouth a little bit. What, wouldn't that use more toothpaste? Not necessarily. You could still use a P amount of toothpaste. Piss size amount of toothpaste. I don't want to get into this right now. Yeah. Next, this is fucked up. That was the worst one. For sure. That's not great to hear. Is that one you made up? No. Well. But I do need to know how big a piss size amount of toothpaste is. Oh my is. god. We'll bring on a fucking It should have banged. <laughs> you didn't even tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've tweeted it. <laughs> I hope you did. Apartment buildings. I only got two left. I'm reading which one's better real quick. Just read, just read both of them. I want a hot and on a uh, high note, Josh, you fucker. Mm-hmm. Hey, no matter what, no matter which one, I'm going to react to both of these like they're both really good because I'm content. Thank God. Bank robbers and films deliberately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they deliberately do a bad job. That way it deters people from breaking into banks. Bank robbers and films are deliberately designed to misrepresent misrepresent how actual bank robbery should be done so criminals will get caught doing bank robberies. Yeah. (sighs) I've always said I was going to rob a bank a certain way. I would do like Ocean's Eleven. Well, I was going to do it. And then Doc Ock stole my cheese. And it's like, well, now they know. Now that I know that they know to prepare for a Doc Ock type scenario. It's like, I can't use my octo arm setup. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Do you think it should have been more Doc Squid? He only has six <laughs> arms. Uh, squid actually don't have six arms. Squids have, uh, I think, ten or, or twelve. This is really fucked up. So it's actually a common misconception. Apartment buildings put fake doormats in front of empty units to make the building seem more full than it actually is. Yeah. Didn't Wasn't there like a whole TikTok series about that? The... It was a guy where he thought he was the only person in the building, right? Yeah. Or that, like, on his floor. Somebody came through and put like uh to go menus on every door handle and they were there for weeks on every oh. door handle but his. And like but like every door had like doormats and like decorations like people live there, but like nobody grabbed these menus. So what's the point of that? To make it so you they can increase like your rent that way they're Probably. like Yeah, you gotta do it. Someone's waiting to move in. Yeah. Oh. I like that. That is funny because when I lived in an apartment building in college, I know we had neighbors. We had a neighbor below us and a neighbor that shared the walls with us. But uh, other than that, couldn't tell you a single time I saw everybody else in our hallways, which is a little strange considering I lived there for a year. Never saw another single person in those hallways. Hmm. That but is a little strange. They all had door. They all had doormats. Do you remember our first apartment when the uh, couple below us were fighting? Mm. And you got so mad at me. Well, Yeah. I was laying on the ground with my ear to the floor, like listening. And he was like, Stop it. That's so rude. I am nosy. <laughs> well, also, I was concerned because there was like things getting thrown around. Mm. So I'm like, Do I need to call the police? Yeah. Like, is there an abusive situation going on here? But I didn't. I was just being nosy. Our, our downstairs neighbor would get into fights pretty frequently, but I don't think she lived with the guy. She would just get on the like fights over the phone with him. And then she would go out and like smoke on the patio. We were on the second story. And then she would like invite us down to like, like I'll buy you guys drinks if you want to hang out. It's like, no, we're not going to hang out with a 47 year old woman. That's, <laughs> I'll buy you, I'll buy you booze if you hang out with me. We have our own 21 year old friend. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for this week's Circle Jerge. Josh hated it. What? Thanks, dude. I loved all of them. Big especially- conspiracy. Josh hates. All circle judges? No, I mainly yeah. just hate to see you succeed. Hmm. I that hate makes, when you are happy. That, it's a real friend. That is a real friend. But hey, after every every week, circle judge is followed up with a listener submitted sound. Maybe you could be one of these listener submitters sending us sounds. This one comes to us from Haley. Hey, judges. Hello. Hello. I love you, Erica. You're a queen. <laughs> Thanks. How's it spelled? And it's spelled right. And you can say yeah. my name when no one is around you. Say, I'm Haley. I sing this little ditty after the worst stories, and I thought it was time to share. When no one is around. 
I did the regular version and a shorter version. So have fun. Peace and love, bitches. Haley. You acting kind of shady and calling me baby. What a sudden change. You're the worst person. You're the worst person who has ever lived. I vote. I really, I am demanding that that be put on the soundboard. Oh, I got a lot of thoughts. That's so good. Haley, how do I know from the way you sang that Glee is one of your favorite shows? (laughs) Oh, this is a show tunes person. That was a show tunes. Okay, well. This person loves musicals. (laughs) That's, here's the thing. (laughs) I hate musicals, but I liked that, and I think you should put it on the soundboard. Do you want to guess if that's the long or short version? That is the short version? That was the long version. Oh. Oh. Eight seconds. Short version? Six seconds. (laughs) Like five seconds. An insane difference. I think they just don't say worst person twice. That's the uh that's like the you can buy a four piece for a dollar or a six mm. piece for a dollar like twenty. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm gonna get the six pieces. Well now I have to get the six pieces. That'd be kinda of fucked up if I didn't need to get the six piece. I'm wasting <laughs> money at that point. Yeah. And after every listener submitted sound, I'm just thinking I missed my favorite conspiracy on that list. I must have skipped over it somehow. We'll get it at the Read end of the episode. Right no, what we'll get it at the end please? of the episode. I'll close the episode with it. No, okay. I feel like I I'll need to know the, it right now. I'll close the episode with it. Don't worry, guys. After every listener forget. submitted sound, how dare you? After every listener submitted sound, we have a listener submitted story, and this one came to us from. Pretty please don't use my name. Hi, can I get a female name? Persia. Persia. Hi, judges. My name is Persia. Twenty-seven female. And boy, do I have a tale for you. So, let me set the scene. The times are (laughs) pre-COVID. Queensland, harsh summer heat. Uh, There I was, a spry, naive... A spry, naive youth in a big city. I've been on dating apps for for a while now and was starting to feel hopeless. I decided maybe it was time I shift gears and just had a little fun. Because I'm allowed to have a little fun with no strings attached, yeah. right? Yes. Right? Sure. And from what I understand, girls just want to have fun. Hmm. So. If Cindy Lauper is to be believed. We always believe I her. don't know. I don't know if that's Cindy Lauper. Enter uh, Rolando. No idea what his real name is. I've def blocked it out. Of my memory, that is. We watched and quickly made plans for him to come over to my place. It was Cindy Lauper, folks. I it binked a, it. I freaking binked it. He binked it. It was a pretty cut and dry hookup. I figured at worst, the sex is bad and I never see him again. Right? Yeah. Wrong. Typically. I'm having happy hours, happy hour drinks with a coworker when uh, Rolando sends a message that there was a family emergency and that he needed to cancel our meetup. Okay. I wasn't upset or anything. I figured he probably just got cold feet and that that's pretty understandable. I told him not to sweat it, and it's totally fine. And that I hope everything's okay. But to my surprise, Rolando sends me a message a little while later, basically changing his mind and saying he's game to come over. Okay. Good for you. I found this a little odd, but again, just figured he got cold feet for a bit. I asked if he was sure about it, and he said yes. Oh. Fast forward a couple hours, and we're in my bed doing the dirty. When I notice this guy is shaking... Like, not just a muscle quiver from holding himself up or something. My whole bed is noticeably vibrating. Pussy tube bomb. Yeah. Not only that, but he's sweating profusely. I'm legitimately concerned he's having some sort of coronary event. There's there's a clip of Shannon Sharp talking to, I think it's Chad Ochocinco. We're both football players. Shannon Sharp is a, a sports commentator now. Uh, and he's just, it's, so, it's such a funny clip. Where it's the definition of pussy to bomb version. I don't even know the context, but out of nowhere, Shannon Sharp is just like, hey man, if her pussy's good, good, I'm a bust in like 30 seconds. Like, I'm gonna go out in like two strokes. And Chad Ochocinco is just like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, dude, if it's that good, good, I am out of it. It's like the most crazy clip. It's like, what? <laughs> was this live on air? How did this? I, I, it feels like it was maybe a podcast. It was like a okay. video podcast. It's such a funny clip. It's like, how did the 
conversation get to this? It's supposed to be like a, a semi serious like show where he's like talking to a lot of athletes and stuff, and he's just like, "Man, if that pussy's good, good." <laughs> he's like, "I'm out of there." <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, I was legitimately concerned that like, he's having some sort of coronary event. I put my hands in between us and say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you okay?" Rolando responds, "Yeah, I'm fine." Me unconvinced. Are you sure? He sighs heavily. Well, since you're asking, my dad died today. Ah! Stunned silence. This man is still inside of me right now. Oh. What? I finally ask him? For real? He says yes. Despite the absolute static that's going off in my brain, I say, I'm so sorry to hear that. How are you feeling? Because what the fuck else am I supposed to do to- I spend the next 20 minutes being this man's naked therapist, listening as he tells me about how it was his biological father from overseas that he only recently met for the first time, and that he doesn't have much of a relationship with them. Is he still inside you the whole conversation? I think by this point, no, but still naked. Well, that's better. Well, I say things like, it's totally valid to still feel sad and to grieve. Even if you didn't know him well, he was still your dad. And the way you're feeling is normal, and it's okay to be confused, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh-huh. All the while, my brain is absolutely reeling that this guy actually did have a family emergency and still decided to fuck a stranger. Mm-hmm. Please help me understand the thought process. As I walk him out the door, at long fucking last, he tells me he's probably going to just go drink with his buddies. Takes all of my restraint not to yell, why couldn't you have just done that to begin with? Instead, I wave as he walks down the porch steps and call out, "Make sure to drink some more water. Make sure to drink some water too." Like the fucking mother figure, I feel like I, I am now to this man. As soon as the door shuts, I literally fall onto my me, I literally f- fall on my knees, bemoaning my existence. I feel like I wasn't asking for much, but message received loud and clear. Universe, never again. My roommates dubbed him Dead Dad Guy. <laughs> I hope whenever, I hope wherever Rolando is that he still is embarrassed by his decision that night. The end. God bless you and the work you do. Love you three. Heart, Persia. Maybe Rolando just was feeling numb and needed to feel something. And he was feeling something. And that triggered the rest of his feelings. So... Yeah, men make a lot of really bad decisions when it comes to processing feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially grief. Yeah. And so it was definitely, it's definitely the classic dude of like, I'll go have sex to get my mind off of it instead of processing things. I'll get my mind off of it. And give me that, give me that aux cord. This is such a funny clip. I got to play it. It's so fucking funny. If you got that ooh wee, I'm touching books. That, uh, it's, it's a mind game. You got to mind for yourself. If you're in, listen. If you're in the ooh wee, you got to think football, think sports, think some completely opposite of what nope. you're doing. It'll help you nope. last longer. Hey, I'm telling you, if you got that ooh wee, I'm Mr. TMB, touching bus. <laughs> I love that they're calling it ooh-wee. Yeah, they're being like, it's just so funny, man. To be like, he's like, no, you got to think about football. You might be like, no, man, I'm I'm Mr. Touch and Bust. That's so funny. (laughs) Now, is that before or after the Cat Williams interview? Uh, (laughs) I'm guessing before. I think I've seen it before. I need more celebrity interviews like that. Ooh-wee. The Cat Williams? Yes. Mr. T and B. I didn't watch any of the Cat Williams. Oh. I don't watch it either. It's it's so good. He just spills so much tea, and it's like <laughs> I need more of that. I need more celebrity gossip drama. From what the, some of the clips I saw, I couldn't tell if it was actual tea or like man losing his mind, like tea. psychosis. Yeah. Mm. I mean, did you hear the thing where he said he re- read like three thousand books a year from the age of seven till fifteen? <laughs> <laughs> And someone did break it down. Like, well, if you're talking about kids book, it is like possible. They're 15 pages long, but sure. Um, did you see the, do you know, Bobby Altoff Mm -hmm. and she was interviewed or on a podcast with Kiki Palmer Okay. and Kiki Palmer was like, so you're an industry plant, right? Yeah. Did you see that? I I didn't watch it, but I saw it. Yeah. 
And Bobby's like, I don't even know what that is. And she, Kiki no, basically goes baby, on. Idiot. <laughs> Kiki basically goes on to say, like, well, it's basically that somebody that doesn't have any talent and is uh, like pointless or mm-hmm. I forget what she said. And then Please has a connection a to somebody in the business. Please make me an industry plant. Please. And she's <laughs> like, how do we have the same manager? It took you six minutes to get here, but it took me 20 years. Mm. And she, it was Bobby looked so like uncomfortable yeah and just kept going like well i don't really know what that is and playing it off and kiki was reading her like a book and i was like yes i i do pause to like is she uh bobby also also had a viral moment like a week before that with michael sarah okay where, like she was talking i didn't know she is still relevant well she only gets relevant when she gets like in these controversy stuff because her content in my opinion is like it's innately like destructive over time like Mm -hmm. you can't get more awkward yeah and uh, in this in the style that she does it like if you compare it to like chicken shop date or um the fuck is that it's same as that show but british it's okay well but it's like hot ones but british kind of so it's more about like them asking questions and like actually getting to know it but the host is is really really talented and she's really really good at like like hot ones sean evans like really diving deep and like making it an interesting conversation while making it awkward and whatever right um but bobby's styling is like it's putting the awkwardness on the guest and it's like you can't one-up it anymore so like the show yeah. just gets a little stale but i don't know i do i do hope that kiki was actually like fucking calling her shit because yeah. that'd be awesome that's what it seemed like but i was she did she had the moment with michael sarah where like she was like Edge, egging on edging she was egging on michael sarah and like got on his nerves and he like walked out of it but it's like is that fucking planted is that planned because like if michael sarah didn't want that to come out his team would have told him like don't fucking post that yeah you know what i mean so it's like i don't know hmm. now secret bonus listener submitted story hey it's persia again back-to-back submissions baby wow this isn't my story, so feel free to use my real name. I'm still not going to. This happened to a friend of mine who we'll call James. Jimothy for short. Nice. Yeah. Sweet sure. baby Jimothy was in college and new to Tinder. He ends up matching with a girl and they meet up in person. They end up back at her place where she proposed they watch a movie. Jimothy can't help but notice that all the DVDs are shark related. <laughs> But he's still young and thinks the best of people. Maybe she's an inspiring marine biologist. Who can say? Hmm. The movie ends and the girl puts on another movie. Okay, Jimothy thinks. I guess she just really loves sharks. For whatever reason, Jimothy sticks through the second shark movie. Perhaps it's out of politeness. Perhaps she was just really, really hot. Who can say? She kind of looked like... What's the lady from Friday Night Lights? Connie Britton. She kind of looked like Connie Britton, some say. Not me, but It's crazy that that's in that email. We were just talking about her. The movie ends and the girl finally shoots her shot. She tells Jimothy that she has a shark attack fetish. Oh my god. Okay. Jimothy realizes he spent the last four hours being groomed by this lady. She asks if he would be willing to pretend to be a shark and attack her in the apartment complex pool. Jimothy declines this request. (laughs) <laughs> the pool is pretty out of sight and no one will see you she insists jimothy tries to explain that the privacy isn't really the issue here he then has to make an excuse and leaves and that is the wildest fetish i've ever heard of how bonkers is that okay love you bye huh. love persia take the et out of fetish what do you got ish take the fish. et fish shark attack baby uh. <laughs> That is a strange one. Uh-huh. Very Did, strange one. She really jumped the shark with that one, huh? Boo. It is weird to prime someone up with shark movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to Netflix and chill and it's just we watch shark, Sharknado 1 and 2 and it's like, how do you feel about a little, a little shark attack now? I don't know about Especially it. to whip that on on like the first date. Yeah. Like if you're doing, if you're doing a hookup, and you're gonna whip out like some very different fetish stuff, 
I feel like that's the, that's a bold one. There's no way he brought swim trunks. True. Like how's like it's not even a it's not even a trunks don't wear clothes, so why would he it's have not even on? a practical one at that point? He's just, <laughs> no, right, no, just, no, you can no, say it. It's okay. It's the dumb. people want to hear what you were gonna say. I was gonna say that when he's <gasps> pretending to go ahead. What do you think I was gonna say? I know I wanted you to say it. <laughs> And when he's pretending to be a shark, uh-huh. he's naked. Yeah. Okay. And he's back floating. Yeah. And his, his penis, penis is the penis dorsal is the fin. fin. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, Richard. I had a friend in college who, on a hookup, which she had been like kind of crushing on this guy, but they finally like hooked up. And he made her call him daddy. The whole time. Okay. And like. Wait, wait. He made her call him daddy? Yes. Okay. The whole time. And it's the first time they're hooking up. They don't really know each other that well. Yeah. And like that's not something that she's really into. Because she she has daddy issues. Which like. Yeah. She has She's Yeah. She's a woman. But like not in a good (laughs) way. Where, But she did it. Because she's like. I mean. I'm not going to kink shame you. That's a pretty common. Sure. You know. Easy one. So she did it. But it like wasn't doing anything for her. And I was just like, on the first night, he's asking you to like, can't can't the first one just be some like normal stuff? Yeah. Test the waters, <laughs> get to know each other. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like yeah. super out of touch. But like, I, I, I just mean, feel like that kind of stuff is is y- you need to get to know me a little bit better first. That something like the daddy thing is if it's gonna be a hookup, I feel like it's not weird to throw it out if it's gonna make you enjoy it, enjoy it better. Sure. Versus like the shark one where it is like there's a lot of pre production that needs to go in. Yeah. I feel like daddy and the hookups is a lot like I feel like it's like a porno trope that became real. It's like uh people like having like screaming loud sex like out of like porn oh, movies yeah where it's like hey maybe i'm doing it wrong <laughs> I, our sex is not us screaming oh you're doing it and wrong. then jo- wrong or right wrong yeah. okay cool mm-hmm. i thought i misheard you um i wish i did <laughs> uh but yeah that doesn't ha- that only happens in the movies and so like i feel like the same thing with daddy it's like that came from pornos and i should have just stayed in pornos it shouldn't be in real life in my, in my, everybody you talk to doesn't like it. Uh, there's no. definitely people out there that like it. Yeah, I know somebody. Everybody, like, like, I think everybody, it's gross. No, everybody you talk to doesn't like it. I know somebody. You wouldn't talk to them, huh? You wouldn't talk to them. I don't talk to them anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Then it's That's not strange. somebody we talk to. It's strange. Yes, it's just, it is. <laughs> it's just weird that the technicality. Somebody in this room talks to them, probably at some point, probably once a month minimum. That's gotta be me then. No, you or I. Christian, zero percent chance. Mm-hmm. Anywho, folks, that's it for the main episode. Other than this last conspiracy theory, Ooh. I'm so glad you didn't let him forget because I thought for sure that's gonna be on the bonus episode. <gasps> Just kidding, it'll be now. Ooh, weekly bonus episode. Oh, weekly, weekly bonus, bonus episode. episode. <laughs> Was that your little laugh? Yeah. Or did you add that in? <laughs> I'll never tell. Toilet roll sheets are getting longer. Yes! Not by a lot, but it's enough to reduce the total number of sheets on the oh. roll, thus making you buy wow. more rolls regularly. Okay, I've got an addendum to this. Okay. Do you think they're getting longer like this way? Like I just... The, the rolls are getting so thick now. They almost don't fit on the roll. It's like, like the, yeah. a the quadruple holder. double roll, and it's like, hey, guys, just give me more rolls individually. Yeah. I need it to fit on my thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. One of our to- like toilet roll holders is like open for one side, so you can just slide on. But then the other one is like a set size, and the one we bought last time was like just barely fits. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah. But this is this is the strange opposite of shrinkflation, but still kind of. Yeah. Because it looks like you're getting more, but you're actually getting less. Yeah. And then there's some freak in the comments like, What do you mean? Why would it why would that mean you're using more? Or why are you wasting it? And it's like because a normal person goes to the perforation. Right. We're mm-hmm. using a full square. So you're you're using a less efficient square amount. Yeah. 
Because it's not a you... square, it's a rectangle. Well, true, yeah. that is very yeah. true. But this is now making you use more slices per roll. <laughs> slices. <laughs> yeah. So it only it makes sense. They're onto something. Okay. And also, I just don't get the toilet paper math where it's like, this one's sixty four times more toilet <laughs> paper than a Cottonell piece of shit toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I do need them to start selling the like normal roll next to it. Yeah, I do need like the A reference, the banana for scale, where it's like, <laughs> is this really? Because there's only nine rolls of toilet paper here. There's no way that's sixty four times what I'm supposed yeah. to be getting. <laughs> Maybe. Erica, where else can they find us? You can find us on the internet. And any social media platform that you're on, we're probably on that too. So search us up. You go. And you can type in at Judges Pod. That's J O D G I E S P O D. And follow. Give us a little follow. Interact. Do the things. You can you can find us on Discord if you join our Patreon. You'll get a link to go to our Discord for one. One dollar gets you in there for life. There have been some very insane anonymous confessions in our Discord recently. Oh, boy. And you have to get in there because they automatically delete after 24 (gasps) hours. So if you want to go in there and get the tea, you got to be in the Discord. Okay, wait, but why aren't we reading anonymous confessions on the pod? Mm, Some of them are pretty good. If they're anonymous. I think we'd have to I'll go in there to see if they're cool with it. I'll read the most recent one. Somebody, new ones. I like to look at the tissue after blowing my nose and seeing if anything fun came out. Yeah, everybody. And the next one, when I was 10, I ate glass because... <laughs> oh, no, that's <laughs> so bad. Hey, head on over to the... <laughs> and we love you guys. <laughs> oh, my God, Joshua. Maybe we should vet him a little bit. Maybe we should do a little bit of vetting, guys. Uh, my right testicle we has been you. about 5% torsioned for a week. Yikes, you should get that checked out, bud. Uh, you can get a percentage of a torsion. I just figured it was all or nothing. I feel like any percentage of a torsion is bad, right? Ah! I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I torch my dick sometimes. Hi, Laura. Have a good week. Love you guys. Bye. The judges love you.